Oh, coming at you here from the ATX, it's the Box to Box Radio Podcast. Currently hanging out, trying to stay safe, stay sane during COVID-19. Uh, we are very fortunate to get to break up the mundane with, with some interviews with some people that um, have influenced us personally and have been big influences on the game, uh, both home and abroad. So today, of course, you guys recognize Travis. He's back. He took a break last week from recording, but we're glad to have him here again with us today. Uh, and then also on the screen from Dallas, Texas, we have uh, FC Dallas legend uh, and and kind of a, a big impact on Travis and I's love of the game. And uh, when we were growing up, we have Kenny Cooper. Kenny, how you doing today? Awesome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And enjoy getting to have you here. So, yeah, we we fill Kenny in. We're going to grill him uh, on uh, on some uh, some of his stops in uh, the world of soccer and, and some of the things that he's gotten to do along the way. So. Kenny, before we kind of dive, it, dive into some more formal questions here, I want to get it started. We always like to ask our guests to give us a brief synopsis of how they got in, invested in the game, how they got started, and where their career has taken them. So if you had to give just kind of a snapshot highlight of your involvement in soccer, uh, how, how, would you, how would you describe that? Ooh, all by the grace of God. Um... And uh, I, I grew when I was a kid. My father was a professional coach, indoor soccer coach. Uh, he had played professionally uh, for a long time. So from a really young age, I saw uh, the path I wanted to go down and follow in his footsteps. And um, thank God, you know, I, I was fortunate to, you know, live my dream out to, to play and um, and uh, experience a lot of great cities play for a lot of great coaches, make a lot of friends and, you know, teammates uh, along the way and um, had highs and lows and all just like, just, uh, just an amazing, had such an amazing time that's helped just, you know, for my perspective on, on life and the game at, at this point in my career. But um, I have a true passion for the game. That's, it's only grown since I've, since I've stopped playing professionally. So, you know, I love playing pro ball. I love the game when I was a kid. I love talking about it. I love watching it. And I'm just hugely passionate about it. That's awesome. Yeah. And and you've mentioned that you've had so many different avenues in which the game uh, has affected your life, whether it's um, growing up playing the sport, watching your dad coach. And I imagine you went back and you've seen some footage of when he was patrolling the nets for the Dallas Tornado as well, uh, which is awesome. Uh, but I want to focus in on uh, something that has impacted Travis and I, and I imagine impacted you as well. Uh, we all know that you got to suit up uh, for a large part of your career for your hometown team in FC Dallas. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about what it was like playing uh, in the city that you called home. It was a dream for me. I mean, I always say I was the biggest homebody mama's boy you've ever met. And so to have the unique opportunity to play pro ball in my hometown have my parents in the stands, um, my, my wife, my, you know, so, so many family and friends to just to be able to share um, my career so closely with them was such a blessing to, you know, share the good times, the wins, the goals, and to go through the, you know, the losses and the difficult moments as well, just to have my support system around me um, was, was, it was amazing. I mean, my, my career, you know, I, I ended up um, in a lot of different places, but I was fortunate enough to play for Dallas two different times and I think spent, you know, the most, you know, uh, the most time with the single club with FC Dallas. So to be able to do that again, to just to be able to share so much of it with, with family was just awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I, I can speak for, for both Travis and I. It was awesome getting to, to grow up watching you play. Um, part of the reason I was growing up and I was like, man, I'm going to be a goal scorer is because I watch you banging goals, especially against the dynamo. Uh, <laughs> you had some pretty amazing moments in derbies. So it was, Thanks. it was fun getting to, to drive down the road and, and watch you play growing up. But, um, Dallas wasn't your only stop, like you said, and, um, we'll talk a little bit later about your, your various stops around MLS and things like that. But, um, you spent uh, a good bit of time in both Manchester and in Munich, uh, traveling, playing overseas. So what was your experience playing overseas, and, and how was that different from playing here in the U.S.? 
Um, well, it, it was amazing. So I, I started my career at Manchester United and, um, prior to that was, was, you know, playing club ball locally here in Dallas, training maybe just twice a week. So it was, it was a, a big difference to go from just like the, the youth setting to becoming a professional where you're training every day at, um, you know, one of the biggest clubs in the world. And, um, so it, it was it was very interesting, just like the that transition. And um, and I was never a youth national team player growing up, you know, or, you know, so it, it was um, I, mean, I look back and I'm, I'm just so grateful to God that I had that opportunity to, to to start my career at Manchester United. And it was such an amazing education for me as well, because those those are like my college years. Mm-hmm. And so to be surrounded, um, you know, to be a part of that club, I was just telling someone the other day, what's amazing about Manchester United is that it's this huge global club. And out of my friends. Hi. <laughs> you want to say hi? Hi. He's a glow. Hello. <laughs> I'm telling that sucker. And uh, it's this huge global club. and um, But it's a family atmosphere. And it has this amazing culture there. And one of the, what they did such a great job of was integrating the young players with you know, the, the first team players. So like, even though I, I may not have been training every day with the first team, um, I was able to be around, you know, these top, top professionals in the cafeteria or maybe in the gym or maybe see them training, maybe, you know, have little conversations with them here or there. And at the time, Manchester United had Ryan Giggs, Paul Scholes, Rude Van Nistelrooy, so many heroes of mine, Rio Ferdinand, uh, I mean, just so many. Um, and so for me to start my professional career there and have the opportunity to learn from them, I just felt like I was able to take so many things with me when, when I left. Um, and then when I came back home to Dallas and started my d- domestic uh, MLS career here. But um, I, uh, it was just, again, it was just such a great education for me and an opportunity to learn from just the, these heroes of mine. Um, and so when I came to MLS, it was, um, you know, I was so, I was so excited about it. And like I said, I was, it gave me an opportunity to bring all that I had learned from this great club uh, to a new adventure. Um, and, uh, and at the time, I mean, FC Dallas, you know, had, you know, beautiful new stadium. They had only, I think, opened it up the year before. So it was impressive. I mean, this, even looking back now, it's impressive to see where the game was at, we were, we were chatting before this, how at one point FC Dallas were training in or playing in a high school stadium. And so when I came to FC Dallas, it had, you know, they had this beautiful stadium and it was, um, it had really like, you could see the game, had, the game had grown so much. And so, um, you know, it was just great to be able to experience the game in Europe, also, you know, here in the States and, um, you know, both just amazing experiences. And just like looking back at that time, like when I first started in MLS, I think there may have been a lot of players who wanted to go to Europe to get this, you know, soccer culture experience. But gosh, nowadays in Major League Soccer, I mean, some of these atmospheres that are there, you know, the stadiums, uh, just the energy of the fans. I mean, you know, there's it's it's like it's like you know some of these top places in Europe. So the, the league is just it's so impressive where it's at right now. That's a really long answer. I think I might have gone off topic. <laughs> that was, no, I was all good. I like that for sure. Um, yeah, and and one of the 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 things you mentioned was was atmospheres uh, here in the U.S. And I think. Um, one of the greatest atmospheres that we see in TV, and I've, I've been fortunate enough to, to see one uh, Cascadia Derby match there was, was in Portland. So yeah. uh, I think Trav is, is super interested in that as well. He's a, he's a, big, uh, he's a big Portland guy. Yeah, it's yeah. Got, they got a great atmosphere, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, I do have my first question for you, Kenny. When, when I think Kenny Cooper, obviously there's, there's so much, and, and – for me, I don't know why. I don't know for whatever reason. It could have been a, any of the hundreds of Dallas moments. But for me, when I think Kenny Cooper, I think of 
goal for Portland Timbers, climbing on top of the goal as the celebration. <laughs> um, I, I don't know why it just sticks out of my head. I think that was one of your first times coming back from overseas after you had left Dallas and gone to Germany. Yeah. Um, Portland, brand new club, and you score this very nice goal. And iconic celebration, jump on top of the goal, hanging <laughs> right in front of, you know, the, the Timbers Army. Um where did that celebration come from? Was that just spur of the moment adrenaline? Was it planned or did you have a bet maybe? Yeah, good question. Um, well, going back to like my Dallas days, I think I tried doing like the slam dunk celebration a couple of times on the crossbar. Um, so I don't know if I was just trying to do the same, but um, Portland Timbers, they, they actually just uh, posted, posted a picture on their Instagram account of, of that moment. Mm-hmm. It's such a, yeah. it's so cool to see it and, and such a great memory. But, oh, you talk about energy. I mean, Timbers <laughs> Army, are, I mean, they are absolutely amazing. It was such a blessing, such an honor to play in front of them. And so to score in front of them, I mean, it, it, it was like, you know, I mean, certainly some of the highlights of, of my professional career. And, um it's, it's, it's fun to just like talk about it now and to see that picture that they posted just to relive it in a way but um you know i remember when i was coming back from europe um to mls and to play with portland i was so excited by um you know the soccer culture that they had there and you, you know i could see it you know even before i got there you know and um so to experience it was amazing to be a part of their inaugural season in, in the league was was just um, such a privilege. And uh, I, I just loved playing in front of Timber's Army and you can you really feel their energy. So, um, yeah, that's a great memory. And, the you know, the Cascadia Cup rivalry is, is a special one as well. And I actually I got to experience it, you know, as a Sounders player, also as a Timber's player. And um, those are always really, really big games and games that, you know, you know, meant a lot to the fans as well. And just a lot of fun to be a part of. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Speaking of iconic goals, uh, you've scored goals all over the country, outside of the country, internationally, everywhere. Um, What is the one goal, if you only got to pick one, that really stood out the most for you? I know Mason and I have one in mind, but I want to see what your your opinion is. Um, I think I think the one I scored from the halfway line. Here oh, in hey, Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know what makes it like you just like I think most special too is the video I've seen. Bobby Ryan was commentating uh-huh. on it. Uh huh. Perfect. Um, which you know, gosh, God bless him. I I miss him so much. What a great yeah. teammate. And um, and you know, I, I think that one is is maybe um my favorite. And it was the first game of the season, I think, against Chicago Fire. And it's, it's interesting. My dad – so my dad was a goalie when he played professionally. And he would always tell me, hey, like, look up and see where the goalie is. Because he would say, the goalie comes off their line. And so I must have just, like, caught a glimpse of the keeper off his line and just went for it. Um, and fortunately, it went in because I'm not sure my teammates would have been too happy with me for shooting it from the halfway line. <laughs> line. But I think that was my favorite. <laughs> Man, I have uh, I have vivid memories of like that was on like the ESPN top ten or whatever for the week that it happened. I have vivid memories of like we recorded it at home and then I like made my friends watch it. I was like, <laughs> y'all people watch it like my non soccer friends and they're really yeah. they're like okay, they but they're like this is really cool. I was like, yeah, that's really hard to do. Like that was, that was great. And was it was it uh who was in goal? Was it John Bush was John, in goal? John Bush. Bush. <laughs> oh man. Man. Great. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that one was it's, it's it's funny. I mean I like there are there are certain ones like throughout my career that like stand out in my mind. I can't say I remember, you know. I'm not like the kind of for some reason I can't I don't like look back at my career games and I can like detail all these things. Like I saw LeBron James doing that recently. I even think he was maybe telling you like all the stuff he was saying and all the different, you know, I, for some reason I, I, I'm not like a big details guy when I look back on games, but there's certain goals that, you know, I remember really well. And, um, you know, that, that was definitely one of them. For sure. Um, I wanted to, to now talk about um, another kind of fond memory and maybe something that that shaped you a lot as a player 
as well. Like Travis said, you've gotten to to stop pretty much everywhere in the U.S. and, and also overseas. I mean, just in the league alone, you've been with Dallas, Portland, New York, Seattle, Montreal. Um, you've gotten to travel all over the country and, and even to Canada. On all of your stops, who is the best player that you've ever played with? Played with? It's really hard to answer that uh, because I, I I had the privilege of playing with a lot of really, really great players. I played with Thierry Henry at Red Bull. Played with Clint Dempsey, Obafemi Martins in Seattle. Um, when I was at Man United, even though I never played for their first team, I, I had an opportunity to train with Wayne Rooney, Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, just so, so I've been fortunate to, you know, to be teammates with some top, top players and just to see what they were like on a daily basis, their training habits and, you know, all those kinds of things. So it's hard to pick just one. Um, yeah, it's hard to pick just one. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, when I played with Red Bull and I played up top with Thierry, I mean, he was just, I mean, in my mind, he's one of the greatest players that ever played the game. And um, it was so it was so fun playing up top with him. And he, he was the kind of player that, like, even though he could, like, dribble an entire team and put the ball in the back of the net, if, I, I feel like if he saw you in a better spot, he would, he would dish the ball. You know, he was unselfish like that. And, he, you know, he just had everything. Power, speed, strength. He had incredible vision. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been, you know, it, it was just so fun to play alongside him um, and to, again, just to see what he was like in training, um, you know, for him to share, you know, like a tactical thought with me. Um, so, yeah, I think I'd have to say him. I'd have to say him. That's awesome. That, that kind of segues really well into my next question. So. Um, you've kind of talked a little bit about some of your your heroes that you got to train with and and just hang out with and do life with in Manchester. Um, but who were some of the players that you idolized growing up? Oh, R nine. That that was. I mean, the Brazilian Ronaldo was my hero growing up. And I mean to tell you, if I saw that his top, like if I. Like, I would tie my shoes the way he tied his shoes. If I saw that, like, he didn't put the lace in the top loop, I wouldn't put my lace in the top loop. Like, I wanted his shin guards. I wanted his boots. Um, I mean, the, the, was, real, the real question is, did you get the half-moon haircut at yeah, some point? No. <laughs> that was the question, too. That's no, real good. pretty short these days. I should try it. You I wonder could, what, my, oh, I wonder what my wife would say. If, if, <laughs> no, but he – man, uh, he, I mean, that guy was – that guy was – you know, my, my playing hero for sure. And, um, you know, I think, too, he's, he's had such a huge influence on even top, you know, some some of the top stars of the game today. I'm sure, you know, most players would answer him, you know. So uh, he was definitely, yeah, my supporting hero. That's awesome. So, Kenny, with, with, with every great career comes adversity and, and kind of low moments. So, um, I don't know. I haven't talked about it much, but I don't know if you know this, but on the day that Tyrone Marshall actually uh, broke your leg, I was about, I think, six or eight feet away from the actual tackle itself. Um, so I know that was a really tough thing to be a part of, and I can't even imagine what it was for you. Um, but you, you, you've gone through injury. You, you, you know, you spent some injury time in, in Germany as well. Um, what was the toughest moment of your career? Um, and then how did you battle back to, to fight on? Because there were just so many times that you kept going and kept going and advancing your career. Well, you know, I, by the grace of God, I've had some great moments in, in, in my great experiences along the way, amazing clubs I was able to represent. And I've also, you know, faced adversity, like you said, some injuries along the way. I've been sent to reserve games. I've been left out of the squad. And, um, you know, for me, I mean, the foundation of my career and life is and was uh, faith, family, friends. And so that's what I lean into, you know, the good times, the bad times. It's what, you know, helped me get through my, like, I think it was a 17 game gold drought I had in Portland, um, get through, you know, long-term injuries, just really leaning into my faith and God and, 
um, you know, talking to my family and friends and uh, getting encouraged by them. And, um, you know, just one of the things I mean, I just love connecting with people. And like, you know, during this time, this challenging time, you know, with coronavirus, I've, I've been FaceTiming friends. And it, that's it, it's what I think helps me keep my spirits up. And so, um, yeah, it's 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 ad- adversity. I was um, I was talking to a group of people the other day and just like resilience, persistence, I think were just two really important themes during my career. And I, I think of resilience as getting up when you fall down and persistence as, you know, just continuing on, just, you know, you know, when you keep going. And um, what was amazing for me, and it's helped just form my uh, perspective on life is some of my highlight moments in my career came after some of my biggest disappointments. And so now it's like, okay, if I'm going through a tough time, it's I think, you know, like the way I frame things is like, it doesn't mean that, you know, some, there's not something great around the corner that there you know, aren't better, you know, there, there are better days ahead. My dad had this great quote. He said, um, we had this great cool plaque of it. It says today could be the best day of your life. And I just love that kind of optimism. And so, um, yeah, I just, uh, I'm an eternal optimist and, and the, the source that is, like I said, my faith, family and friends for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Kenny, I got one last question for you, but it's kind of a two part question. Then I'll throw sure. it to me. I think he's got one more to throw it to uh, end it. But the first part of the question is you've been on both sides of the coin. Now you've, you've, um, as we talked about before we got this started, you're doing some coaching now. Um, played at an extremely high level, coaching at a high level. What What is the biggest difference between the two in your eyes? Oh, uh, they're, they are different for sure. Um, you know, I love the game so much. And, and what I realized, out, like, when I stopped playing was that <clears throat> there's so many avenues in the game. It's not just playing. You know, like I told you, I love talking about the game. I love watching it. And so, you know, one of the avenues I've gone down is, is coaching and I love being on the field still. Um, I love just what an awesome platform it is to share from my experiences, to be a source of positivity and encouragement. And, and I just feel so much purpose, you know, in, in doing it. I, I, I benefited so much from the encouragement and positivity of so many people. And, and so it's, it's so, it's awesome to now be in a position to try and, give that to somebody else um so there's definitely differences i mean oh i'm not sure anything will compare to running out there in the field and <laughs> you know feeling that energy from the fans scoring a goal climbing on uh, goals <laughs> but it's all but it's awesome to be able to stay on the field just in a in a different capacity and so um you know i hope that i can always stay in the game somehow um and so, yeah, so I, I've really enjoyed coaching. I really have. Yeah, I I mean, I completely understand that. Before I throw it back to Mason, one bonus question. You've played for an unbelievable just spectrum of coaches throughout your career. If you could pick one that was the most beneficial or that you enjoyed playing for the most, who would it be? Oh, gosh. Tough one. It's really tough because I've, I've – I mean, I've been able to – spend time around i'm not good at the choosing one answer (laughs) the choosing one question this is hard and and for me like i it's it's so funny like i'm thinking of one of my friends and i think he might have played for the same coach his his whole career and for me i had so many different ones i mean and and i I've, i've been able to be around other coaches to and learn from um you know, even though I haven't played for them. Um, I mean, obviously, when I was at Manchester United, Strauss Ferguson was there. I mean, what an amazing influence he had on my career in life. Um, Ziggy Schmidt, God bless him, uh, with Seattle Sounders. Um, I love playing for Hans Baca with New York Red Bull. I mean, there's so many, I mean, I, there's so many coaches I could name. And, even, and then even, like, when I stopped playing, I had an opportunity to train with Jesse Marsh at, with Red Bull, and he's um, – you know, obviously with Salzburg now, I mean, he was amazing. Even though I never played, you know, for his team, I spent a lot of time training with his team and just to see what he was like, his, you know, enthusiasm and passion for the game. Um, and, you know, recently I've had a great opportunity to spend a lot of time around Lucci, um, 
Gonzalez here with uh, FC Dallas and he's just someone that, you know, I really admire. And so I, I, I've been, and I have to say my dad too. I never played for my dad, but my dad is like, I mean, we still call him coach, you know, he's our dad, but we call him coach. He's, so I've, I've, I've been able to, um, I've been able to like see what a huge impact a coach can have in your life. And I think that's like now, again, like I find so coaching seems so purposeful to me and, and I've benefited from so many of these great people. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's opened my eyes, I think, to see that like it's, it's a great avenue to pursue and something I could be passionate about and stay connected to the game with. That's awesome. So uh, I'm going to go off book here, too. Um, and, and I got another question I want to add because uh, um, I we got to interview Brad Stuver, who's the current uh, goalkeeper at, at New York City FC. And I asked him a question about his time uh, with Chivas USA, and it produced one of the greatest stories we've ever had uh on this podcast yeah which is awesome so uh my uh my question for you is what is if you I, I don't know i know you said you the pick one questions are hard for you um because it's hard to pick just one moment but uh what is a good story that yes. you have from your playing career i'll tell you one of my favorite stories and the <sighs> the, the funny thing is like it is it was maybe just like one of the lowest points in my career but out of it has like, you know, come some of my funniest stories. So when I was, when I, when I moved back to Europe, I went to 1860 Munich when I left FC Dallas and um, spent a little bit of time with them before I went on loan to an English uh, championship team called Plymouth Argyle. And this was leading into uh, the world cup, the 2010 world cup. And I was, I wanted so badly to make that World Cup squad. And I went to Plymouth hoping I could, could get some games, get playing, do well, you know, make a positive impression, make that World Cup squad. Um, and it just went the complete opposite of how I wanted it to. I just, I, ne I, I like never played. I don't think I started one game. And I, I found myself just like desperate to get on the field desperate i remember like texting the coach like i'll play right mid i'll just like you know, I, was, <laughs> I, I was just desperate to get on the field and so this, this is so fun so we we go on this like five day road trip we had two away games and we were staying like at a this hotel i think i think it may have had a training field on it and we had this player in our team called Kari arneson who had a, he had like the longest throne you've ever seen Kari played for iceland um, and, and this throw was like one of our strongest, you know, it was like one of our strongest weapons on the team was Kyrie's like long throw. And I mean, we could get the ball at the halfway line and all of a sudden, like he could like, you know, chuck it into the box, like a corner kick. It was amazing. So we're on this long road trip. I'm not playing games at all. And Kari gets injured. And so we're doing our 5v2, like our Rondo boxes at the start of practice. And John Carver, uh, he was the assistant manager at the time, he starts, like, shouting out, has anybody got a long throw? And he's like, has anyone got a long throw? And so my buddy goes, Coops, now's your chance. <laughs> <laughs> so, I again, I was so desperate to get on the field. I wasn't playing at all. And so, mind you, I'm not sure, like, I'd ever taken a throw in my whole life, like, even youth career, like, you know, I was a striker. I was never on the sidelines taking the throw. I, I was usually like the target for maybe, but you know, out of my desperation, I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, John, yeah, yeah. I, I may have a long throw. And so I, he like pulls me out of the 5v2 for like a throw and tryout. So I go, so I'm like, I'm like, the guys are doing their 5v2. I go to the side of the field and I get this ball and I'm like, this might get me in the team. So I, I like pull back and I'm trying to throw this ball with all my might to try to like replicate Kari Arnes, you know, Arneson's throw in. And I throw this ball and it just goes straight up in the air and starts like bobbling <laughs> right in front of me. And my buddy goes, damn Coops, I was only joking, bro. <laughs> and I mean, it, I mean, I'll never forget, you know, needless to say, probably I, I, I never really start. I never started a game after that or before or before that. And it was just like, <laughs> Wow, I look back and think like what a low point trying to take a throw into <laughs> to, oh to get into the squad. So 
it's funny, man. Like it's funny. It's I, I thank God I was able to have some really great experiences and, uh, you know, but there's moments like that, you know what I mean? There's moments like that along the way and they end up being like some of the funniest stories. <laughs> That's so, so don't put me on thrones if i ever get on your team make sure i'm not on thrones yeah like if you it. ever man if you ever if you ever feel like driving to austin on a thursday night and playing in a men's league game i won't i won't make you take thrones <laughs> bad idea yeah, bad idea. yeah. <laughs> strategy to have like the six three six four guy on the throw and you kind of want him on the other end of that but right. if i was on the bench i, I i'd do it. Try to get hey. on the field. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Yeah, so competitive, fun. competitive advantage. Trying, yep. trying to, trying to get a, a leg up on the competition. That's one of my favorite stories. It really is. I just like look back and just like laugh thinking about it, and <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> a moment of desperation. Oh man. That's great. Uh, so besides, um, <laughs> you know, asking kids to, to take long throw ins, my last question for you here is um, what is one piece of advice that you would give to a youth player that's trying to go professional, that's trying to make it pro? Um, you know, I would say just to, to believe it can happen. Um, you know, one of the things I, I joke that like my parents brainwashed me to believe I can, I can play pro and uh, I joke, but like, the reality is I always, I was always so supported by them. It didn't matter if I missed a penalty kick. Um, you know, my dad would be telling me the best players miss penalty kicks. He just always made me feel like it was okay to, if I made a mistake or he just always made me feel so capable and confident. Um, and so, you know, I really carry that with me. I just always believed it could happen. Um, and I was, you know, they were like feeding me, you know, with that encouragement and positivity. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I, you know, I think that belief is important, and so, uh, you know, I, it just makes me think and just feel so grateful for you know having that supportive, positive voice. Um, you know, it's interesting. My junior year, I played. My team played in the the Dallas Cup Super Group. We got to the final, and I missed a penalty kick in the final. Actually, so this is crazy. I hit the crossbar in this game four times. I came on as a sub in the final. It was my junior year um, in like the 60th minute. I headed a ball, hit the crossbar. I took a free kick, hit the crossbar. And over time, I took a shot, I hit the crossbar. And I took the last penalty kick in the final and hit the crossbar. And, you know, before I could even look up, tears in my eyes, my dad was there on the field, you know, hugging me, loving me, supporting me. And it was like a year later, we played in the Dallas Cup again. And, you know, kind of like out of that, I think I had my opportunity to go to Manchester United. And so, you know, even through the disappointments, I think just believing that, you know, it was possible was, was a really powerful thing. So I think that belief's important. That's awesome. Yeah. We have a, uh, we have a uh, little niece who's uh, she's eight and she's in the uh, developmental Academy currently for, for Lone Star. Um, and that's something that we've seen from her is that she has this belief and this attitude that she will play for the women's national team one day. And I she's out that. there, she's out there two hours a day doing drills when no one's watching and yeah. working on her touch. And she's had to play a little bit of left back and she's predominantly right footed. So she's out there like as an, as an eight or nine year old out there every day working on her weak foot. And you don't that. see that yeah. with kids normally. So that's, that's, that's great. Awesome. And, you know, I think, too, it's important to, you know, like, there's, you might be starting every game with your team. You might be on the bench. You might be out of the squad. But it doesn't mean that, you know, the next week that you won't be starting or that, you know, in a year you won't be a starter. And so, you know, I think regardless of kind of where you find yourself, that belief is important. Like, God, you know, like, I'm going to make the team. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start scoring goals. I'm, I'm going to do it. You know, it's possible. It can happen. I just think it's a powerful thing. Man, well, that was that was awesome. Uh, I think we've exhausted all of our questions and threw a couple more at you. Awesome, um, yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. That was really great. great yeah, that was great. Oh, Travis has the uh, – I love it. Oh, oh man. I like I that. It. Wait, wait, wait. He's got more. Oh, oh he's nice. Team <laughs> national team, sweet. <laughs> The national team one as well. I love it. 
Uh, love it. Had to bring those out. Yeah, we have we have those too. I mean, those are those kits are like they're such a special mem- you know memory pieces that that we've held on to as well. I have some like you know I've traded some jerseys in the past. I was talking about this the other day, and I have I have a Freddie Adu jersey. These are some of my favorites. I have a Freddie Adu jersey who I was I was a huge fan of. Um, I have a Kyle Beckerman jersey too. Yeah, uh, that that he signed for me, and so is it, th- that's one of the cool things, you know, when you play is is being able to keep your kit or trade with somebody else. So, I think I think Travis is looking around. I think we actually might have both of those. So my dad has no a kidding. massive collection. Yeah, so look at that in the background. That's so awesome. uh, we we I saw I see the the men's national team Kyle Beckerman. We have. Marquez from Red Bulls. We have David Beckham. We have uh, Henri oh, Red Bulls. Wow, uh, sweet. We have uh, the number eight Wayne Rooney framed signed jersey, which is pretty sick from United. Love it. Um, and then my favorite, obviously, we have a framed uh, Bobby Ryan kit. So yeah, I have a Bobby Ryan kit too that I often wear. Yeah, that's so cool. Man, well, well hey, I, been... I appreciate y'all's support over the years, and it's it's cool to be able to reconnect like this years later. So, you know, y'all know that, you know, you and your family are super appreciated and it's fun to be able to, you know, play in front of you guys and to reconnect years later. Absolutely. I, I, I remember, I mean, probably one of the last times we saw each other was when you were leaving Dallas one day, you were doing extra shooting training and we were standing there and you're like, eh, I need a goalkeeper. Travis, come get in goal. It's just absolutely <laughs> like, Watting it stuff, it's like five feet over my head. It's like that's the coolest thing in the world. Kenny Cooper just shot at me for forty-five minutes. So. Uh, I, I was always looking for someone to stay after training and jump in goal so I could take shots. On the, I hope my daughter wants. To, I hope my daughter wants to be a goalie so I can just continue just taking a ton, shots. A ton of shots on goal. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, Kenny, we really appreciate your time today. Um, was was glad to have you on. Um, for our listeners that don't know, uh, is it every Monday that you're running the Instagram story for FC Dallas or is I've been that- doing mon- I've been doing Mondays at three, jumping on their Instagram account and, um, and just reconnecting with old teammates. So I'm doing it today with Drew Moore. So I'm really excited to reconnect with him. One of That's my awesome. best friends and former roommates. Sweet, yeah. So yeah, you guys go ahead and check that out. But, um, we will have another episode coming out for you guys here uh on monday and we uh we appreciate you guys listening thank you guys we'll see y'all soon thanks guys